Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to make a hollow form. It's been a while since we've made our last video and I'm very happy that Lisa's here again. Yeah, so, me too. Yeah, oh sure, you're not allowed to lie here. Um, so we're both very happy to make another nice, real nice little video. In this video we're going to make a hollow form. Uh, to be more precise, a self-closing hollow form. Yep, a self-closing hollow form. Something, something like this. You can see I hollowed it here, but there's no hole left. And the wood itself shrinked and warped and then it closed. You can even let it close um, uh, further. But, well, we'll see how far we get. The wood we're going to work with is a piece of cherry. Put this trunk down. A piece of cherry. Why cherry? Well, we use cherry because it, uh, it tends to warp a lot. And we need that, well, if it doesn't warp, it won't close. Makes sense. Yeah. So. Um, uh, you, for instance, you probably know if you're a wood turner and you're making nice things from wood, then you know that if you have turned you, it hardly warps after you've turned wet wood. Using uh, cherry is a different story. It also it starts to warp when you're still turning with it. Well, let's go. First, I have to determine from what side would I like to uh, hollow it? Well, as it is a little bit um, wider in this area and over here it's a bit narrower, I would say hollow it from this side. So we're going to put this between centers and the center, the drive center is going to be over here. Let me Cut away some bark first because I want this, these, these teeth to be into the cherry and not into the bark. Because it's just a small, it's just a small drive center and it's quite a big lump of cherry. And I want to, I, I want to the wood to stay in the lathe this time. There we go. It's more or less in the middle. It's running nice, smooth and it looks quite balanced. Um, so, time to do a little bit of rough turning. I want to keep the bark over here. So, the first thing I do is make my shape on this side of my hollow form. So, for your imagination, this will be the top side of my hollow form. There we go. I will stop frequently because I want to look if I'm not taking off too much. Well, over here I, it wasn't necessary to stop of course because I knew there was more than enough bark. I was just looking about the symmetrical, uh, if, if left and right were going a little bit symmetrical. It's cherry so this, these kinds of 
park. Well, it moves a lot of air. <laughs> Sorry, Lise. Ow, ow. Now you see what I mean. Uh, it's slowly starting. I get this, this strap of of bark and I want to keep that. You can see it's it's a bit smaller over here. Here it's a little bit wider. What I could do is move my center point a little bit um, so that I take more wood from this side than from this side and then we will we can compensate that. Oh. As you can see, I moved my center, let's say half an inch or something, uh, down. So this comes a little bit up. So I'm taking off more here than here. Which also means that my wood now again is unbalanced. Let's see what, we, what it does. That'll do. Now I'm going to take these corners off here. I will, I will make this uh, narrower, but first take some rubbish away here. By the way, I treated myself on a on a, a changeable handle with a with a ER25 collet, and I made myself in that with a nice piece of olive wood a handle on it. Nice gift. Yeah, a friend of mine. She comes from the south of the Netherlands, and she always says, "As who eigen is kietelt, dan heb je nooit leut." If you translate that into English, at least. A lot of saft wood on the cherry. Would be much nicer if we, if the whole piece wasn't like this. But hey, we. Well, it's all nature, man. I'm gonna take one more cut, and then we'll decide if I. Okay. Oh, I have to stop here. Mm, yeah. Okay. So here, I don't want to take very much more off. This might be a little bit smaller. So let me make one. Uh, let me make a last cut that that this is a little bit more smooth, and then I'll turn it around. I don't see it, but there's still bark here. So we're doing good. 
Let's turn it around. Exactly in the center. Bark, 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 bark. It's okay. Cool, I've just taken a few cuts over here. I did that because I want the bark, I don't want any bark here. I want the bark to start over here. You see, that's more or less this part of the bowl. Here the tenon was, so, um, or maybe it's more clear in this one, you see? So the bark here, the bark here, I can't have it running up to here because then it's in my tenon and I need wood here because otherwise it will fall in two parts we don't want that okay tenon there's the tenon That is 82, let's make it 70 then, because I have talon number three, jaws that will fit. Perfectly. Lose this. So that's 70 mils. Seventy millimeters. Well more or less, but it'll do. And now it is time to uh, put it in the chuck. Good. Now you can more or less see what the shape is going to be. And I can uh, decide now to make little changes. Not, not very much of course, because here I should not take anything away anymore. But over here I could do that if I wanted to. Because you see there's a lot of bark here. And here is also still a little bit bark, but it, it, 
it's okay if the if the bark starts here. So I could refine my shape now, but I'm not going to change to change that much about it. I think. Well, this line we have to get, take this line out, of course. Let's do that first. That's about what the shape is going to be. Drill a hole. Speed down a little bit. Drilling in wet wood always makes sure that you get rid of the shavings in time because they tend to clodge and you won't be the first to split a piece because you want to have your drill back. <laughs> uh, let's do a bit of measuring. It's about 15. Oh, I can go in deeper. Good. So now the hollowing process can start. The thing with hollowing is always you're hollowing a few cuts, and but most of the time actually you are um, you are trying to get out the shavings through a little hole. In this case, you can make it yourself a little bit easier by drilling a few holes, because this is going to be away any, anyway, so why not drill a few holes here so that when I get there you know, on the inside with my gouge the shavings go out here. I could use maybe this one, I don't know actually. Maybe it's a bit too big for... Maybe I take something else. But let's try. almost done over here also good the hollowing if you if you start hollowing don't use the speed you use on the outside but but give the, the wood needs time to more time to uh, get away from the gouge so to say um, so I'm, I'm now at 750 or 800 RPMs. Um, well, this one was used in a course, I know for sure. 
And the nice thing about these woodcut pro forms is that you can decide yourself how aggressive you want to have your... If you're moving the shaving limiter, you can decide how heavy you want it to cut. Let me have a nice and aggressive cut. Because we don't have all day. No. And while I'm here, let me give it a quick sharpening. Let the boring process start. So that's the bark. Bark is always a bit nasty. The RS2000 shaving remover. And it might occur that there's so much shavings inside of your hollow form. that your hollowing tool is grabbed by this bump of shavings and then you end up like that. With hollowing, you probably want to look inside every time you make a cut, but actually there is no need to do that. If you do a lot of hollowing, you, you, can, you can look anywhere actually and, and in your head, the shape that you're doing on the inside is, is going in your head. Any shavings inside, you see. It's like you're making soup with too many vegetables. Yes. Now let's first take this one a bit more out so that I can touch more of the inside over there. I'm not 
shower. It's for free. I'm about to touch this point now and uh, I hope that as soon as I get there the shavings will come out also here. There we go. looking for an equal wall thickness, more or less. If I feel here with my fingers, it is at least one inch to 25 millimeters. And I want to go to eight millimeters, one centimeter or something, eight or 10 millimeters. So there has to be a lot of material removed. More work to do. I'm going to do the outside, a bit of reshaping on the outside of my hollow form now. Um, and it's getting quite thin and I'm standing over here in the flying zone of the, of the chips. So uh, I will put on my face shield now. My face or my, or my fish bowl as Phil Irons calls it. Um, and, and well, let, let me start. As you see, I first opened my face shield and then stopped the lathe. So you can all comment now on my behavior. Um, let's sand this thing. The, what are you grinsing? The wood still is pretty wet. Um, so sanding up to 400 grit or something like that. It, is, it, it doesn't make any difference. So I'm just going to rough sand it 80 or 120 just to get the, the, the trails from my bad cutting out. If this takes a while, the sanding and the, the, the wood starts to warp, um, what you can do, because it, if it's turning and you're sanding, moisture is coming out of the wood. So the wood starts to warp already. And in, at this stage, you don't, want, you don't want that yet. So I haven't used it now, but it's there already. It's, uh, it's a liquid that um, I stole a formula 
from Glenn Lucas in 2012, I think. He called it Crack Be Gone and I think I will bring it to the market as AWS, anti-warp spray. I spray it in my shape. So when I turn it, the wood keeps wet and will deform less. It will warp less. Um, we want it to warp, but not now yet. So, thanks for this formula, Glenn. Really appreciate it. I rough sanded it and um, take out, well, a little bit my uh, turning marks. And now we're going to saw a line here so that there's that we're creating a groove. Take all the bark off. Take all the bark off like this. And the part that we that is left here will make this with a saw. Of course I can do it with a hand saw, but well. <laughs> That's our basic. I must say, I thought I was a little bit thinner. Before I forget, please hit the subscribe button. point this carving thing but I'm just trying to get the edges a bit more smooth and to send it all away would be lots of work so actually this is the end of the turning and the carving and the sending and now um, the, the warping should start what I want to happen is that these two wings move towards each other so the pith will be forced outside, will be pressed outside by, by the wood. And what will happen is then, if the shape is like this, it will slowly move like this. And now my hands go, but normally I hope it will warp like this. Normally what I would do is uh, put this away somewhere in the corner of the workshop and just wait for it and see what happens. Um, and sometimes, like I said, sometimes it warps like this. Sometimes it doesn't warp at all, but it's cherry, so I'm pretty sure it will warp. If you would do this in you, for example, nothing would happen. Uh, but I want, I want to do an experiment this time. I will soak it in hot water. Here's some hot water. Let it soak, let it soak. Only a week has passed and Lise is back in the workshop. Lise asked me, can you shorten this whole process? And I said, no, well, okay. So what I did, I didn't put it in a, in a corner of the workshop. I just um, I took it out of the soaking water, took it out of the water and put it in a microwave. Three times, uh, five minutes, full power. So it was more or less cooking when it came out. And put it in this clamp and 
put some more pressure on it than there is now on it. And you can see that, well, here was a big hole and now it isn't. But unfortunately, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's a shame. Yeah, well, it is what it is and it's wood. These things happen. It's probably because I left it a little bit too thick. Because normally, when, when you leave the pith in, it will crack over here for sure. And for one reason or the other, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it cracked over here. Anyway, that's the self-closing hollow form. Um, well, not every project goes exactly as planned and gets even much nicer than you want. I have an idea. If you think, okay, I can do that, make a self-closing hollow form, send me a picture on my Facebook account. Um, and when we have one that is really nice or very special, you win a negative rake wow. scraper. A pointy negative rake scraper. If you want to know what you can do with a pointy rake scraper, watch this video. So, I would say go for it. Make your own hollow form, self-closing hollow form. And see you next time. Subscribe please and see you next time.